Welcome to the Black Knight Nation podcast. I'm Sal Interdonado. This podca- podcast is sponsored by Higher Echelon. Don't you wish you had some secrets to help you get an edge on your business competition? Wouldn't it be great if someone could solve technology and personal challenges at your company that you don't have time or expertise to fix on your own? There is a solution. Higher Echelon is a world-class consulting firm that trains employees in sports psychology secrets that drastically improve work performance. Founder Dr. Joe Ross is retired Army who played and later coached for the cadets and puts that experience to use for clients. Higher Echelon helps organizations shave hundreds of hours off work time and save and make more money by working them through technology transformations, including organization-wide change management. You'll have to go at it alone, and you'll have to stay stuck. Higher Echelon is your go-to trusted partner for organizational excellence. Go to higherechelon.com. That's H-I-G-H-E-R-E-C-H-E-L-O-N.com or call 866-469-9945 today to take your company to the next level. Go higher and go Army. So here we are with our special guest today. We're welcoming 2016 Army football captain Andrew King. Andrew, thanks for taking the time uh, for us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Andrew's got some exciting news coming up. Uh, 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 you know, going uh, get, got accepted to Fordham Law School, right, Andrew? Yes, I did. Congratulations on that. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about your Army football career uh, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, first off, give us a little um, give us a little update on what you've been up to, and. Um, a real quick, um, just overview of, of the whole law school, um, how you how the law school thing came about. Okay, so uh, well, recently I've been uh, stationed out in Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, uh, infantry officer. Um, I'm married now. Um, my wife is actually a 2018 graduate from uh, West Point. Uh, so how this law school came about, um, I got accepted into the Army's funded legal education program. They select uh, 25 uh, NC non commissioned officers and officers each year um, to go to law school and come back and be a, a judge advocate in the Army. So I got selected for that program and I applied for Fordham and was fortunate enough to get in. Um, so I'll go to Fordham, take the bar, and then come back and be a JAG, which I'm very much looking forward to. Absolutely. I, I know there is some law enforcement in your family, and uh, we'll get we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, if you have any comments or questions for Andrew and I, please feel free to post those. Um, you can also uh, follow us on all the pod, podcast platforms. We're we're out there, and we're now live on Facebook at Black Knight Nation, uh, Black Knight, Black Knight Nation's page. Um, man, I was thinking about that picture. Andrew, I'm always going to remember that picture of you and Coach Munkin and Steven Johnson after you guys won that Army-Navy game your senior year. You know, just the joy. I was on the field. I was actually probably a couple feet in front of you when that picture was taken and you guys were <laughs> singing second. I mean, that's a memory that probably you could always remember pretty uh, clearly today, right, of that game. I mean, Talk, talk to me a little bit about first that that feeling and that emotion of winning that game, especially your senior year. Yeah, so it was a you know surreal moment. Um, I actually didn't know the game was completely over. I thought we had to go back out on defense. Um, that that next play mentality, but Ahmad, I think Ahmad got the first down. They went into victory formation. As I look around, I was like, yeah, this is it. Um, yeah, it, it was surreal. You know, everyone rushed to. Rush the field. I can hardly breathe at, at points. Um, but yeah, it was a surreal moment. Uh, you definitely, you definitely should write a movie or write a book about that moment because it was special. Man, I, what am I doing? I, sh- I should be started that. I should start that. <laughs> it's, crazy. it's crazy. Let's let's do a couple questions right now. No, I'm kidding. Uh, um, you know, just um, the camaraderie with that bunch because you had been through so much, right? I mean, your freshman year and then Coach Munkin comes in. And those, mm-hmm. those first couple of seasons might not have went the way you wanted it to go. But I know that senior class had a lot of faith that it w- I had Jeff Ajekam on earlier this week. He was I, he was a, a class below you. 
But he, mm-hmm. he gave a lot of credit to you guys for getting that, that winning started in, no doubt, with the 8-5 and five season your senior year, but getting that winning mentality going. And that I know that junior, that junior year for you may have not gotten your way, but how did you guys really – what was the secret? What, how were you guys able to turn it around? Do you think that your senior year? Um, I, I think it was building. I think we built momentum before that. Uh, the first year, Coach Muggy came in. I think the mentality of you know just going out there and pretty much participating is not enough. Um, you start seeing guys around the locker room that you know it hurts them, like to their to their core to to lose a game, um, and. The, Talk about my senior year, my junior, our junior year, like we were close in a lot of games. Um, I think we lost a total of five, five, five or six games by a total of eleven points. Like we were real close, and it's just about getting up, getting over that hump. Uh, you have the, the entire team, you know, buy in and starting the winter workouts before my senior year. So everyone buying like enough is enough. Um, I spoke to the the freshman class um, during our summer camp and. I said, hey, guys, your record against Navy and Air Force, you know, you guys are undefeated against them. Just keep it that way. And then you start that trend to each class that comes in. Like, I never want to lose to a service academy, right? And you start building that culture of winning so people get used to it. So, like, it's uncharacteristic of a season as as uh, last season was. You know, we didn't get into the bowl bid. Uh, we didn't do as well as we wanted to. Um, it was uncharacteristic for us. Like, we're expected to win this past season. You see all the great wins that we had undefeated at home and things like that. Um, you know, just changing that culture in Army football. I was happy to be a part of it. Um, you know, our class had a big, big thing to do with that. But, you know, talk about Jeff and Jekyll's class, they're great. Um, you, you think about your the legacy you leave, um, when you leave an organization like that. Um, better than you found it. And, you know, each class in your class has been through just left it better than they found it. So uh, I'm very appreciative to be a part of his brother. Yeah. When you're out, when you're out now serving, they always said that, you know, when you're playing those service Academy games, you know, when you're able to win those games, you can go out and say, maybe have a little chip on your shoulders and maybe brag a little bit that, that how much, mm-hmm. do, how much does that mean when you're out there, you know, serving and when you're in, in, in military life, so to speak? Uh, it definitely means a lot because you, as a as a cadet, you know you're in, you're in a small bubble. You don't understand how much impact those games have. But out out in the forest, like everyone is watching those games and paying attention to them. They're they're the conversation at work. They're the conversation. I'm, I'm I'm sure like overseas, you know, people are paying attention to how I perform and how their future leaders of the of the military are performing. So when you win those games, that's you know it means a lot. Uh, not to just the the brotherhood within the football team, but you know the whole military as a as a whole, the country as a whole. No doubt. Yeah. Let's backtrack a little bit. Um, how how did you? I like to talk to uh, our guests about how they how did you get to West Point? How how did the recruitment go? And what made you um you know choose Army as you as you, as your college decision? Um, you know, coming from uh, Flushing, New York, went to Flushing High School. I uh, wasn't really highly recruited. Um, you know, New York City has a lot of people, so um, it's pretty diluted with, with talent. Um, so it was really a offshoot chance that I got uh, any, um, I would say, like, recognition from Army. Uh, I compiled, like, my highlight film, whatever I had, and sent it to every Division One school there was. Like, just found their emails on the directory and sent it to them. Um, and Army responded pretty quickly. Um, uh, and, you know, within a couple of weeks, like they were at my school and they offered me. So um, definitely, definitely grateful for that. Uh, and then it was a no brainer. Uh, just when I took my visits to to West Point, you know, you can see the, the community that's built around um, the core cadets. And then you can see the brotherhood within the football team. Everyone's close. Uh, it's something I wanted to be a part of, wanted to contribute. So uh, it was no brainer to choose West Point. Is there anybody when you were a, a young player that kind of took you under their wing and kind of showed you like what the right way was, so to speak, w- with Army or Army uh, with the Army football team? Or 
yeah, I, I mean, there's so much uh, that that 2015 class was really like my the class that recruited me. So you have guys like good Jeff Bacon and um, Terry Baggett, Larry Dixon, you know, all all those guys, uh, and even like uh, Ray Ray Maples, like those guys that recruited me in. Um, you know, you can see like in their eyes they weren't satisfied with with where the program was and they wanted to get better. Unfortunately, like those guys didn't see like the fruits of their labor, but they were a big part of the turnaround as well. Cause they were the seniors when, when coach Mugley came in. So, um, yeah, those guys definitely like influenced me. Like still to this day, they're out doing great things in the army. Uh, and then with, with the, with West Point in general. So yeah, I definitely give credit to those guys. They not only recruited me to help make make my decision easier, but a bunch of other guys that came through. We talked about that Navy game um, your senior year. Um, what memories stand out for you on the football field during your army during your army career? Uh, well, like directly on the field. Yeah, like what? What? Like what is? What is what? Some of your top memories as a player. Um, you know, being Navy was great, but you know, getting that bowl victory against North Texas, um, you know their record didn't show how good their team that was uh, that we played uh, and we lost to them earlier in the season. So just come back at that redemption game and then come home, you know, champions was, was great. Uh, definitely a lot of big wins uh, and it was getting over that hump of, I think it was, uh, it was like central Eastern Michigan um, it was like our first road win. in I don't know how many years, I yeah. we just couldn't win. We couldn't win on the road, and we we're like, "Wow, guys, we can actually win when we leave West Point." So, uh, <laughs> there's things like that. There's so much, so many to name, uh, but uh, you know, the games that got off got us over the hump. You know, we were tired of seeing, you know, seconds expire. Like, I think it was Tulane in 2015 or the 2016 team, uh, like Tulane Wake Forest. Like at the end of the game, they kick a field goal and win. And we we're just tired of seeing that. So this game's that got us over the hump. Uh, I think it was um, we won two straight games for the first time my senior year after we beat Rice. And it's things like that that we we can we were putting things together that stand out. No doubt. And now after your senior year, you did coach at the prep school, right? I did. So uh, yeah, I got they, they kept me along with the with the program. Uh, fortunately, coaching the prep school. Uh, the team there, then it was a great experience because it came full circle. I came through a prep school, like I knew my my uh, my coaches. They were second lieutenants too, and you know, just giving them that mentorship to help them along through the process. And then, you know, seeing guys like um, Eric Smith and Kamonte out, players that I coach, you know, contribute on the field now. It's it's great, and it comes a bunch of other guys too. But you know, the, those are my backers and. They, uh, you know, they're contributing great to the to the team, to West Point and the core in general. You know, these guys that uh, everyone could look up to and look to f- for guidance. Um, and then you see guys like uh, Tyler Tyler, like this this past season. Uh, you know, this is just a great guy that I saw coming in. Um, you know, his family is from New York City, so they have that connection. Um, so this is great to see. Those guys go out there and perform and, and play great um, and be in high standard within the core. Man, when I watch Eric Smith, I see a lot of Andrew King in him. I see a lot of Andrew King in him. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> what, what, what do you see in Eric Smith when you watch him play? I mean, it uh, seems he, like uh, there's a lot of Andrew King in him. So. He, he's a he's a great, um, you know, just technically sound football player. Um, you can see that he's taking his coaching very well. Uh, his, his footwork, his explosiveness, his instinct, you know, it's, it's, it's great all around. Um, you know, I like – you can see him, like, puncture the B-gap like I used to. So it's, it's reminiscent, but uh, he's a great player, uh, probably better than I ever was. He's probably faster, bigger, and stronger. Um, so he's definitely a, a great talent. What's it like as a former player watching them this season, especially, you know, where you didn't even know what was, if they were going to have a season just to produce a successful mm-hmm. season like they had, where, you know, they were ranked at one time, uh, they had nine wins, and, you know, they did win the Commander-in-Chief's trophy in back-to-back yep. games, which is something that 
probably will never happen ever again in the the history of the of the competition. So what what was it like then? What did you see out of this team this year? Uh, a lot of resi- resilience. You know, this season was like no other. Um, you you see like the. I guess it was a senior class last year, the spring the spring season um, for all the like spring sports, like lacrosse and, uh, and stuff like that, that had their season cut off short. And you're coming into the season where, hey, you don't know if you're going to play football again. Um, and for them to, you know, athletic director, athletic director to put that um, stuff together and to have a season, we play a lot of home games, but hey, you know, we'll play whatever. Like Coach Melka said, like, We'll play out in the street and in the concrete parking lot. Just let us know when and where, and we'll be there. Um, and for them to put it together week after week, you know, you have the court kid that's there, but you know your family's not there to watch. All the rest of the community's not there to watch, and you still go out there with the same fire and intensity and the play for the, the brother to left and right of you. You know, it was amazing to watch and just to see them. Like, you know, not every game went the way we wanted to. Even the games we won, we wanted to win by more. We made a lot of mistakes, but the way they bounce back. And then, you know, I wanted to be there when not only that we, we beat Air Force the way we did, but, you know, to beat Navy at West Point, which is a historic moment, um, something that I don't know if that's going to happen again for another 100 years for Navy to come to our home place. But we beat them and shut them out. So that was great to watch. <laughs> this de- The defense this year, right? I mean – Unbelievable what yeah. they were able to do. Finish number one in the nation in total yards per game. And, I mean, mm-hmm. there's been some good defense, especially when you played under Jay Bateman. And then Nate Woody comes in his first season. And, wow, I mean, it, it, this was a fun defense to watch all year, right? Just It seemed like they were pretty quick to the ball, and everybody really played mm-hmm. their responsibilities down to down, down to the, uh, the, the minute degree. Yep, and, you know, with the team that Army is, you know, if you have a defense that, you know, creates turnovers and gets off the field on third down, like it's, it's going to be hard to beat us no matter who you put out there. Um, and then the defense is great. I'm a defensive guy. So I love watching it. Um, other people w- would say that, you know, some games are boring, like we won 15 to zero, but I love that. You know, you see goal line stands. I love that. Um, you know, this, this, that intensity that they bring the offense played great, you know, had a lot of injuries, throughout the season and they just, you know, kept being reserved the next man up mentality and, you know, just kept pounding the rock. I don't know how many beatbacks we have now, but everyone that comes in just does great. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it just, it just seems like, yeah, I mean, especially with COVID, they didn't really know who they were going to have it. Um, mm-hmm. on, on, in every game was, uh, it seemed like they were shuffling guys in and out. It yeah. really, uh, they did a great job. I mean, that bowl game, the effort that they put forth in the bowl game, they were missing, you know, a handful of starters. There were no excuses. Yeah. And that's that's basically uh, Coach Munkin, right, in a nutshell. Andrew, there's really no excuses. You go out on the field, you play your tail off, and let yep. let your effort decide what, what's going to happen, the outcome of the game, basically, right? Absolutely. Those games, you know, you talk about bowl games and games late in the season. Those games are won in, in the winter training and spring football. Like you guys, you have guys that buy in back then. Like, it's the next man up mentality, really. And – you put forth your full effort, you know, and you'll like the results that come out. Now, I was uh, just, um, you know, following up a little bit. After you were done, uh, your football career was over at West Point. You did um, have, you were able to go to Jets and Giants. Um, uh, like, was it a tryout for Jets and Giants or what, what were you able to do there? Yeah, it was, I don't know what it's called. It's like a day, okay, a day camp, day, day camps. Um, yeah, they were, I mean, you did the typical things that like you ran like individual drills uh, and stuff like that. They had like these, um, I guess like introductory meetings for like um, rookies, okay. you know, your finances, things like that. And I was fortunate enough to go be invited to the uh, 49ers rookie mini camp, which was a great experience. Yeah. You see a lot of, I saw a lot of guys that, um, that made names for themselves in the NFL there. So it's a, uh, it's great to see, you know, that they were able to be successful in that in that sense. Who who were you, who did you bump into at 49ers camp that? Um many the name bent a bunch of their their tight end what's his name? Uh Oh, um Jordan uh, 
Uh, George Kittle. Yeah, George yeah. Kittle. Yeah, really. Yeah, he's. I, yeah, I saw him. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I ever went up dancing one on one, but you know, I saw him as a coming as a as a rookie. Um, wasn't really. I don't think he was a high draft pick, and then you can see like that turn. So you really don't you don't really don't know where you're gonna get in the draft, and then you see those those players gonna step up. Um, I think Mullins, their backup quarterback number four. Yeah, I saw him. He actually played with him at the East West Shrine game as well. Wow. Um, to see him like when his number is called and he's he puts up numbers, and he produces. So he, he's a solid, you know, stature in that in that organization in that team. So it's good to see. Yeah, you got to do the East West Shrine, Shrine game too, right? So I mean, those are those yeah. are all great experiences that are great memories for you. That along with the 49ers and all that, and now. Um, now, I mean, this this opportunity that you have, I mean, it's something that probably because I I, I, I looked up a story on you. Uh, you always um, had law enforcement, yeah, law enforcement background, right? Your dad is a New York City police officer for over twenty years, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, in, in your mind, back when you when you were a kid growing up, did you always want to kind of have some kind of law? I know you were, were you a law major also at West Point? Or? Yeah, I, I was a law major as well at West Point. You know, growing up, I always watched those you know, cop shows and law shows. Uh, very interesting to me. Uh, I know I was one of like practice law um, when I grew up. So, you know, just to see that you know, coming to flourishing now is, you know, it's motivating. You know, that the work that I put in back then is paying off. So I'm very, very excited for this next step in my life. What was your favorite cop show back then? I watch a lot. Uh, I would think it's the Law and Order uh, as SVU, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, it's every I can watch that that show all day and be be content. So definitely Law and Order. What, what, um, now this this opportunity that comes about for to be a JAG, um, just is that through? I mean, you have to go run us through the process of that and just how how the, you run us through a little bit about the opportunity, but. Run us through how. Um, I mean, I guess early. What was it? Late last year, you might have found out that you that you were accepted to the program, or so I found out this um, this December, this past December, I found out that I was accepted. So in the summer, they release their they give out their message, their announcement, like, hey, this this board is convening in December to pick the next twenty five people that are going to select. This year happened. This is actually my second year applying for this. So okay. this year um, happened to be they opened it up to the enlisted side, so non commissioned officers able to apply as long as they have the degree and whatnot for this program. So it, it doubled the pool um, of applicants this past year. Uh, highly competitive every year that, that they go through. Um, you meet with the um, the colonel, the colonel, the staff judge advocate. Of the your division, you have an interview with with uh, him or her. Uh, they write a recommendation. You build your whole packet. I got I was fortunate to get recommendations from you know the head of the law department and the deputy head of the law department. Um, and, you know, just build that packet and then I had to take my uh, law school admissions tests and things like that. Um, and they pick me. They don't really tell you why you get picked or why you don't get picked, but I'm definitely fortunate enough to to have gotten picked. I'm happy for the opportunity. Are, and you're doing that all while you're doing your uh, your, your army uh, p- position, right? So you're trying to juggle yes. all this stuff and study. Yeah, so I was I, I was actually deployed to Thailand um, when I was studying for my uh, my law school admissions test, and then yeah, and just being out there, and then COVID hit while we were out there, so we had to, like scramble and shut everything down. But um, yeah, it was it was definitely a, a unique experience in this this past year. I'm sure for everyone. You know, just is going through this this pandemic and and trying to like juggle, you know, meetings virtually, um, you know, studying, doing your job, and juggling all that uh, this past year. So, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to be in the position I'm in right now. What 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 is your position in the army right now? What is your what, what is your position? So I just finished my second platoon time. I was a, a mortar platoon leader before that was a rifle platoon leader. Um, and right now, I was working in the operations. Uh, Operation shop in our, my battalion. I was helping with um, uh, some orders that come down from higher, and then making sure our, our unit is you know ready for those. When, when does uh, when does law school start for you now? When, when, when do you get to yeah. start that? 
Yeah, law school starts uh, mid-August, so I, I'll be uh, changing my station, I guess, in um, in May, in June time frame, uh, and head out to, to New York. Coming back home, yeah. right? I mean, what, what's yeah. it going to be like to come back home and uh, to... For, yeah, I mean, I guess you've been, you, you've been serving for a few years now. What, what's going to mean to come back home and uh, you know study law? You know, with, with family yeah, and friends near. Yeah, it's definitely going to be you know a great experience and a rewarding experience uh, coming back to New York. You know, just it's home to me. You know, I've been I've been in a lot of places. Fortunate enough, but Army brought me a lot of places. Uh, I love being out in Hawaii, but. It's not New York, and New Yorkers understand that when you leave the state, it's just not the same. Uh, <laughs> we we have a different mentality about things, so you know it's gonna be great to be back. Um, hopefully, I catch a few games, and then yeah. more importantly, hopefully that the game at MetLife this year is Army Navy at MetLife is it's gonna happen. Looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, I was gonna ask you, you know, now when you when you are gonna be moving back to to New York, will you? Is there any chance that you'd be maybe, you know, a little, um, see a little bit more of the program maybe, and maybe if, you know, go up to a practice and you know, check things out and that kind of stuff. But I know you'll be busy yeah. on the law side. So. Yeah, I'll be busy. I'll, I'll make sure I study. Um, but I know where I'll be on Saturdays, most Saturdays throughout the year. So there you go. There you go. Uh, this schedule coming up uh, is interesting. You know, they're going to Wisconsin. Uh, if all, you know, Seems mm-hmm. like the COVID's starting to get a little bit under control now. Um, going to Wisconsin, so I mean, yep. that's uh, you know, and, and you you played you played some big you played some big teams too. I mean, you know, uh, Army seems to really uh, give those uh, Power Five teams a run for their money, no doubt. And uh, maybe this is the year that you know they, they get that W over a big Power Five team. Wisconsin is a, a perennial Big Ten, you know, top team, and mm-hmm. uh, that'd be that that. that I, I can't. I can't remember Army going ever going uh, to Wisconsin before. So that's gonna be that's yeah. gonna be interesting. And it's a, this team, Andrew, has a lot of good has a lot of talent coming back. You know, there's a lot. Yeah. Probably expecting even bigger things than last year. So I mean, what I mean, just to get uh, for the football team to go out and play like you know the big schools, the Power Five schools, and, and make a big have a good showing, and you know show what Army football is all about. That's gotta mean a lot to even like your past and, and, and watching the team now, right? Yeah, it means a lot, but I'm sure I can speak for everybody in the locker room that we're not satisfied with just going out there and, and putting in a good show. We want to win those games. Um, and I know that they're pre- preparing the off season with the mentality to win those games to show that we we belong. Um, power, I don't think Power 5 teams want to play us because they see what we, we, we put out and the product we put out. So, um you know, we'll get, we'll continue to get better. I know, you know, Coach Munkin has something. You know, he, he's cooking up. This off is gonna be a great off season, um, and you know they're gonna get after it next year. And I'm excited to watch it. But no, before I let you go, I mean, originally when we uh, were were exchanging uh, text messages, we were we were hope, hopeful to get um, Ashley Jarl on, uh, here on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when I was uh, had Jeff Ajekum on earlier this week, we talked about. Um, I guess there's there's host families. There's families that um, are close that live close by the West Point that kind of help cadets out if, if they're if they're needed. And I just want to maybe um, ask you uh, what um, Ashley's family meant to you and how they might have uh, helped you through maybe some of the some of the times at West Point. Just having that host family or that family that you can go to if there were any issues. Yeah, the, the host family and the, the network that. You know, cadets are able to you know get in touch with and branch out to. Like, they make a real difference. Like even though I'm I'm from New York City, I'm I'm close by. You know, just having someone that's you know embedded in the community reach out to this means the world. Um, the Draw family and the the Horner family extended. Uh, they mean a lot to me to this day. You know, I, I talk to Ashley on and off uh, pretty much every other day, and uh, the things that their family has done for me and the support they've given me is. Um, leaps and bounds other families as well that contributed to you know my 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 well-being while cadet and after um you know that's just the great resources that you know cadets have have at their disposal um i'm just glad that i was fortunate enough to get uh you know paired up with ashley actually through um 
Jeff Bacon um, introduced me to, to the family. So I'm definitely grateful for that. Nice. Um, yeah. When you, you know, when you post, um, you know, your photo with the Fordham law, with the Fordham uh, shirt on uh, this weekend, you know, and you get that, the responses from uh, your, your, your teammates, coaches, you know, mm-hmm. like people like, um, Don Horner and Ash. What, what, what's that? I mean, that's got a, there's got a lot of pride there for the, from those responses, right? That's got to make. I mean, that's got to make make a day or a weekend, right? When you get the responses, you see the interaction from the people that were a big part of your life, right? Yeah, it, it definitely means a lot. You know, um, I like to. Not everything is. You know, you go you play football at at, at a school, and um, you know not everything has to be with sports and it's a show that you can go to uh, a school like West Point and yeah, you can play division one football. You can be great and you can leave, you can leave your lasting legacy, but then you branch off of something that's not athletically, you know, inclined per se um, and have success there and just see the support from the community. It really shows like the, the, the depth of the brotherhood. No matter what, like we go out and do in our lives, there's going to be support um, from the people that care about us the most. So, um, yeah, definitely appreciated that. Yeah, I was wonder. I was wondering, um, to your knowledge, do you know any other football players that have gone the route that you're going to law school and have become Jags? I mean, off the top of my head, I can't think of any. But yeah, I would. I mean, I, I'm sure. Like once the process goes along, I find out more. Um, you know. And I would say, like, not all the older guys are as tech savvy as I am. They probably they probably went through the process and didn't broadcast it. But uh, I'm sure they're they're out there. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna bump into a couple guys who knows down the road yeah. that are, are yeah. I'm noticing it right now. You know, you just there's so many the Army Football Brotherhood. I mean, you look at West Point. Yeah, there are only what 4,400 cadets and maybe what a mm-hmm. thousand a thousand cadets that graduate each year. To, uh, second lieutenant, right? But you don't realize how many people are really out there in, in the world. You know, you just, you know, people that email, oh, I'm a, an 80s grad or a 90s grad and that kind of stuff. It, it, I don't know if you probably bump in, in your military life, you probably bump in to more than I do, right? I mean, just the people that appreciate that, no, not what you're doing, not only what you did at West Point as a cadet and as a football player, but now what you're also doing in the military and now going to law school, right? Yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of alumni and a lot of supporters of, of West Point that are are watching us very closely. So, um, yeah, and then they're always out there lending a helping hand. Uh, definitely experienced it firsthand on uh, this past this past admissions cycle for um, the fund legal education program and then law school. A lot of people out there lending a hand to help as not even if they went to West Point, they might know somebody who went to West Point. And it's just like a, a great connection and a great community to be a part of. Awesome. It's been great catching up with you. And again, congratulations on, on, on this and, you know, starting, a, you know, your journey into law school and becoming a JAG. I mean, I know it's probably something, you know, like we talked about, it's probably something you want to get involved in law. And this is about as pretty much as high at, as far as you could take it on the military side, right? This is the this is the goal, right? Um, as far as on the military side or no? Um, as far as law? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I start off, I said the bottom of the barrel again, but okay. you know, I'm going to come back in, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, it, this field is going to be great for me and my, and my family. So definitely looking forward to um, embarking on this journey. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks for taking the time. Um, little time difference with Hawaii and the East coast, but we're able to yeah. get that. We this has been in the works for a couple, couple of weeks, but thanks. Yeah. Andrew. Thanks for sharing your, uh, your thoughts and your journey. And we'll look forward to following you and uh, your career in law school. Uh, thanks for joining us on the black Knight nation podcast. And uh, we're, we're out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the black Knight nation podcast with your host, Sal interdonato. For more information on your Army Black Knights, visit BlackKnightNation.com. And be sure to subscribe, follow, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app.